Aleluya. El Señor. Aleluya. Nicodemus came to Jesus by night and says, Rabbi, we know that thou art a man sent from God. He says, For no man can do these things except God be with him. Praise the Lord. There are lots of other people who have spotted here and there. And um, truly, I honor you from the depth of my heart. Pastor Paul, I, I saw him just smuggling his way to hide. Thank you. Adorable, adorable man of God. Praise the Lord. Um, if you are a man of God here, if you are a pastor, um, an overseer, or in any kind of structured platform, and you are here visiting, aside from those who are connected to this ministry, please, um, I want you to rise up on your feet, whether you are inside, whether you are outside, do we have such persons? Please rise up on your feet if there are persons like that. Koinonia, give them a big, big God bless you. Big God bless you, inside and outside. We truly honor you, we appreciate you. Zaria has become a place of pilgrimage. The fire continues to burn here, and you will never, never be the same in Jesus' name. God bless you. Ladies and gentlemen, the bishop himself. Hallelujah. Amen. Father, bless our hearts in the name of Jesus. There is a lot to do tonight, and we trust the Lord for a quick walk. Um, as a ministry, we are aware of the burden and the responsibility that the Lord has given us within this territory and across this region, and by extension, um, even all over the world to be a conduit of his power not just the revelation um, of his grace and his wisdom but at times like this the Lord decides to arise as a mighty one and to step in to bring supernatural solutions over our lives and our families and let me just reiterate something that I usually say, especially when I travel for external ministrations. There are five things that should happen in any church and in any ministry that wants to effectively communicate the life of Christ. Number one is that every time believers come, there should be believers should have encounters. Everyone say encounters. It's important. An encounter is an experience that makes a thing or a person real. The substance of the reality of a person or a thing crystallized in your spirit. If it is true that God is real, if it is true that His ways are true, then when you come and sit under this anointing and under this ministry, you should have encounters. The reality of the things that we talk about should be furnished in your spirit. Hallelujah. Number two, transformation. I am personally convinced that if you are in any platform that does not sustain the ability to transit your understanding and to produce superior versions of you by the communication of truth, then um, you are wasting your time there. Respectfully but truthfully, you are wasting your time. Believers must be exposed to the truths that can transform them. I believe in excellence. This is a ministry that represents excellence as our core value. But above and beyond all of the paraphernalia, it is, it is important that the word of God comes with power and that the people are transformed not just informed but transformed are we together number three every gathering that will allow the fullness of christ to find expression must leave a provision for the holy spirit to manifest the multifaceted possibilities that are contained in the christ in miracles signs wonders supernatural solutions 
That's why we are here tonight. It is true that there are people who are called into the ministry of signs and wonders. But any platform at all that bears the name of Christ must have a provision there that allows the Holy Spirit to come in and allow the power of God to be visibly seen in the midst of His people. Now listen very carefully. You've heard me say it. In as much as miracles, signs and wonders are not the ultimate motivation for our pursuing God. We seek Him because we love Him. We seek Him because we desire His life. However, there is a provision in the economy of God that when the saints sacrifice that much, He responds back to them. Hallelujah. There are people here who have traveled um, for days. There are people who have been here right from Monday, some even Sunday, just waiting for tonight. It will be unfair that all you receive is just a theological exegesis of truth. As important as that is, there must be an opportunity where your challenges and your situations collide with the power of God culminating in miracles, signs, and wonders. Hallelujah. I can assure you that the challenges in your life only have a few minutes left to remain. That is for sure. The Bible says to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. Praise the Lord. Number four. The fourth thing that you receive when you are gathered like this is impartation. Now let me explain to you the dimensions of the impartation that I talk about. Not just impartation from the man of God to you, but a distribution of graces you see every time we converge like this it's not just a convergence of people listening to a man it's a convergence of altars alignments dimensions the man of god only leads that process he's not the only dispenser are we together that means that there are dimensions that may not be captured in my life but are needed in your destiny are we together now as the meeting is going on the holy ghost begins to run across the congregation and finds men who have aligned to allow him place that dimension in them and he will pick from some of those graces and bring to you so not every impartation in a meeting comes directly from the man of god it's an uncomfortable truth most people will like to say it came from them but the truth is that it's not just a vertical distribution, even across. Are we together? Yes. There are people who are seated, who have certain graces that are needed in our lives, needed in our destinies. And sometimes we men of God may not have aligned enough to host God that far. God will not keep the people's expectation in jeopardy just because of the limitation of a man of God. He will go out of his way to outsource a system of making sure that their desires are met. This is the God that we serve. Are we together? I think I shared with us a testimony um, some years ago, three, four years. I was at a PFN crusade in Kano. And then I'm prophesying to people and ministering by the Spirit. And then I called this woman out by the Spirit about to prophesy to her. And then God reveals something spectacular. Very ordinary woman, doesn't have any structured ministry. But the woman told me, she's an intercessor, that she completes her Bible every, I think, two weeks or so. Every two weeks without fail. Ah. I stopped prophesying there and said, Madam, like John the Baptist, I don't know who, who should untie whose shoe. And she was humble, ready to come and receive from the man of God and I'm saying this dimension is strange you can finish a book you can finish Francine Rivers volumes you can even finish a dictionary in one day but this Bible when you try to read the Bible that's when you will know the Bible is powerful you can't read the Bible just like that like a storybook you try it ancient words dense with strange power and strange attacks 
Praise the Lord. And so, I, I told the woman humorously, I said, I think that I desire prayer from her. To pray for me for the grace to finish your Bible every 15 days. Ah, if I do that for one year, I would, I would be quoting it. In fact, I would not even... I will just carry the Bible so you don't think I'm a herbalist. But the real quotation will come from my head. Amen. And then, of course, number five, an opportunity for fellowship. The Bible says in one, Psalm 133, Behold how good and pleasant it is when brethren dwell together in unity. It says it's like the oil that comes from Aaron's head down to his beard, his skirt, and so on and so forth. He said, There the Lord hath commanded the blessing. Praise the Lord. And by the grace of God, I submit to you that all five of these possibilities are structurally resident within this place. It is true. And tonight, among the many things, we choose number three. The power of God. We intend to see God move as a mighty, mighty God. Psalm 126. Thank you, Jesus. Psalm 126. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, not if, when, when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, He says, We were like them that dream. Verse 2. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. And they said they among the hidden, there is a kind of testimony that God will give you. You will not be the one to testify. It says the hidden said the Lord. They are hedonistic. Yet they acknowledge the source of that miracle. That although we do not believe in the God of heaven, but this one cannot be by a man. The Lord has done great things for them. Next verse. The Lord has done great things for us, whereof we are glad. Next verse. Turn again our captivity. It's amazing. The Bible says, when the Lord turned, keep that scripture there. When the Lord turned again the captivity of where? It is not unusual to have captivity even though you are Zion. It didn't say the captivity of unbelievers. The captivity, Zion. It says, turn again our captivity, O Lord, like the streams of the Negev or the south. Just leave it at verse 4. Turn again our captivity. Turn away the situation in our family that has brought reproach to the name of the Lord. Turn again the, the, the situation that makes it look as if Jesus is not Lord. Let me tell you this. Miracles are messages. I really believe in miracles. Miracles are messages. And I've explained it here, but for tonight, I will still do it again. Um, please come, Binga. Now, look up, please. This is, this is um, Sean, you stand here. Come. Now, watch this. The Bible lets us know that man was created to be the zenith of God's creation. Are we together? The apex of his creativity was demonstrated in the making of man. And so the psalmist would say, What is man that thou art mindful of? Nor the son of man that thou visitest him. Are we together? And he said, this man, this is man now. Above every creation. The cattle, the fish, and every other thing. He made man the head of his creation. Now, that means that every other thing that happens on earth is with respect to man. Are we together? The activities and the program of God on earth is with respect to man. The oppression of Satan is also with respect to man. That means that if men suddenly die, if the 7.2 billion people on earth suddenly fall asleep and die, Satan and demons will have absolutely nothing to do. Praise the Lord. Kill all the men in the world. Leave the banks open. Leave the markets open. Leave all the safes open. Everything is only useful. 
because of this entity called man are we together without man there is no value to anything leave all the real estate and kill man there will be no value again leave all the fish in the sea and all the business moguls will go down when there is no man everything has value on earth because of man understand my teaching are we together now it is the technology of satan to be interested in whatever god is interested in whether or not he understands why the moment he finds god's attention focus on a person or a thing he will want to come and find out why are we together now this is man this is god this is satan and all of his cohorts now watch this please man is also like a painter's um what they call it the canvas of a painter everything that happens to a man is a letter from god to man or through man to creation that includes satan are we together and it's also a letter from satan through man to god so when this man's family goes through all kinds of oppression barrenness tragedies and all sorts of demonic things it's not about barrenness listen it's not about poverty satan is not interested in those things he is using them like a painter's brush to write a letter and the letter is saying if you claim god is faithful then let me use his highest creation to discredit him are we together now so creation can look at man and read the letter satan wrote to god through man and then you will find people in that family saying look if god is alive where is he that we are going through these kinds of things the objective of the oppression is now being achieved are we together and then at miracle services like this god replies watch this so a situation this guy has been in bondage for 10 years that's a letter that was written from satan through all his family members and say creation bear witness if it is true that he is good and there is no evil in him then what is this looking for in his creation it's not about the challenge it's about the statement and the message on it are we together so if in one minute like it will soon happen an oppression that has lingered for decades just moves in one moment god like julius berger just replies and does a spectacular thing and then signs on it signed the king of kings and the lord of lords the lord of the universe are we together now yes so every challenge that you have you must discern the message there it's not about the unique challenge it doesn't matter whether it comes as poverty it doesn't matter whether it comes as delay it doesn't matter whether it comes as whatever kind of retrogression see it as a parcel sent through you to god i am mocking the highest of your creation as an attempt to discredit your supposed faithfulness and then god continues to seek for men with whom he can reply satan back and when he finds a man and he finds a platform he allows for meetings like this and then he starts writing ha! will turn your life around let's sit down it is true that for five years you didn't get a job now even if you get a job now you will still suffer because for that five years many things you are probably in debt and many other things have gone down so you don't just need a job you need god to do something in your life and in and through that job 
when you get a job with a triple promotion now it's not about the promotion if you just clap for the promotion you did not discern the miracle it's a message i am a restorer of time are you getting it now you've heard me say it humorously that when a woman who has been pregnant for who has been barren for say eight nine ten years even if that woman puts to bed and intends as a couple to have four or five children they will have to add an extra 10 or 15 years to their life to space the children well but when god gives that woman triplets that is nine years of three three years spacing in nine months that's a letter from god to creation i'm still on the throne regardless i am still on the throne so many times god will allow satan to just exhaust his pride on earth and when he is done god will say are you done now let me show you that there is no such thing as yesterday and tomorrow in my economy i'm not just motivating you that he said when the lord turn again the captivity of zion the captivity of zion i saw you yesterday you were a beggar but i see you tomorrow you have experienced there are two ways to climb a tower you use the ladder or you use a lift you will arrive the problem is you may die before you get to one place you will climb and by the third or fourth floor you are there but there is a technology hidden somewhere where you can stand and you are moving by the energy of that lift and within a minute you are there and with honor you can step out they were like them that dream lord i i thought i would have been grateful if you did it slowly the fact that you are doing it but that you chose to move this far that when i started this year my collective goal was to reach here and in one month you gave me five years goal this is the god of heaven if god answers you like a man why will you praise him god will never do things the way men do them no listen i am a man and with all humility it is within my power to be able to use influence or resources to just upgrade someone's life if god upgrades you the same way i'm doing it then it means we are colleagues the jealousy of god makes him to be spectacular there is a signature that only his hand can sign so that you are that's why he told moses say listen 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 moses leave all of this don't mix me in the many gods in egypt i am that i am and i will have to do something that distinguishes me he does it so that no man will ever claim credit for it there are things that is difficult to say god did it you just say god did it because um you don't want to look like a stupid person you are in the midst of intelligent people and the obvious is to say god did it but there are really things that everybody knows that this one is god's doing this is what god wants to do tonight if all you get is a job men can do that you don't have to be a christian to get jobs you just need to understand the laws of life but that there is something that god can do show me a man that restores time show me a man that restores time when time is gone is gone no but not in god's economy time is like a chess he can take it forward and backward listen you see ba i tell you why god does not hurry for many years he gives men speed but god does not hurry and you have to be god to understand why he does not hurry it does not make sense to hurry when you have this kind of authority you only hurry because of something that can overpower you are we together now if i have a bank and I'm hurrying up and he said, Apostle, hurry up. Five o'clock, they will lock the bank. I said, don't worry. So he said, see, I know, I saw the face of that man. He will lock the bank. It's my bank. So the time was only supposed to be for you. When any time I come, the bank opens. 
listen listen very carefully so when you say god show up otherwise men with god say it doesn't make any difference i've checked for the reasons why i should hurry and i didn't find it there is nothing that can put me under pressure to hurry i am god ah. he comes in his majesty and sometimes he allows the pride of men to just continue while they speak god just comes and says what did men say and they will say that there is no rising in this family that the first person built a house at 45 and god says if i use the man who is 30 years old they would think he went to school let me use the mama that does not see i would do something with her and she would dedicate her house in two months this is God for you. God is not interested in any miracle that will not allow the message of his glory to be written on it. There are times that when you bring challenges to God, it's an insult, so he allows it to go deep enough to be worth his power. You don't bring to him what men can solve. You will confuse who solved it. Because while you were speaking to him, you spoke to men too. So that you don't mix the answer and just say, ah, Every time God wants to arise, even the sorcerers will not see that day. He will do something that makes everyone give up. And then he will now say, clear the way for me. Ah, this is God for you. Listen, my prayer is that after this meeting, eh, listen, you not only will receive miracles, but you begin to covet your life being a sign and a wonder. Don't just be a recipient of God's benevolence, but that you are like a canvas. When there are some paintings, when you see artists draw, you just ask, what was in the mind of this? Let God reveal to you what his mind can do. I don't like ordinary things in my life. I like things in my life that come with a statement. This is God. And someone will look at you and not even know how to smile again. He says, this thing, eh? He has to be God. He will just go back and say, Lord, I'm sorry for being foolish. You see, he has repented without your sermon. Your life was a sermon. They limited God in the wilderness. Listen, let me tell you this. Don't get used to pain. Don't get used to pain. There is an ability from heaven that can cross the gates of darkness. I know we are human beings and many times when things become increasingly uncomfortable, we build a theology around them to say it should continue. But this night, roll away the stone and let the God of heaven come in and show you that with men it is impossible, but with God, all things, all things are possible. Every time I pray for the miracle service, I don't pray for too many things. I don't pray, God, heal the sick, cast out devils. No, that's not my prayer. Lord, let there be something. Sign a signature upon someone's life, upon someone's family. You know, I was spending a little time with my family in the afternoon. And while we're talking about this, my sister was speaking and said that, um, that it looks like this miracle service, God is visiting families, not just individuals. He just wants to move past individuals remember i told you you are not free when your family is not free let me tell you sincerely he said as for me and my house if the jo the brothers of joseph all had dreams nobody would kill anybody it was because only one over how many had dreams and the rest said you are joking you saw the sun the moon and 11 stars bow But when everybody rises by the finger of God, then it is a testimony. I don't know who has said what about your life and about your family, but give God a few minutes tonight to answer them. God has an answer. My brothers and my sisters, the God we serve is not man. Don't get used to it. God is not a president of a ministry. God is not the CEO of a bank. God is not the CMD of a hospital. God is not a monarch on earth waiting to die for someone. No. He sits in the circles of the heaven by himself and manipulates all things according to the counsel of his will. 
You will do yourself harm tonight to sit down believing it will happen just as before. Come with your vessels increased and enlarged. Lord, I know you are stepping in. I know you are changing my life. It's June, but people have laughed at me. Where is the extraordinary fruitfulness? I'm still begging. I don't even have 250000 to pay rent. My prayer life has gone down. Ha! This God of heaven. My brothers and my sisters, it doesn't take time. When God opens his mouth from heaven, anything plus anything plus God is the answer he says should be. Your weakness plus God is whatever answer he says to be. Your limitation plus God is whatever answer he will be. I continue to pray and I say, Lord, let this ministry remain not just a place of signs and wonders, but a sign and a wonder itself. If you are looking for a salmon and you don't have data, just think about koinonia. And there is salmon. Is you, are, you are seeing a marvelous God. Listen. By the grace of God, within the time God has given us, we will, we will disprove the pride of men in this world. All of those mundane rules that have been put by the arrogance of men that they claim even God should honor. God has sent us to disprove them. That whoever told you that you have to build a house from salary, whoever told you you have to feed your children from pension, whoever told you that it will take 20 years to know God, whoever told you that your ministry must increase 10 members per week, there is a generation that will answer the arrogance of men. Please don't get used to the natural cause of things. There is an advantage. God programmed in the journey of the believer what I call systems of advantage. His mercy is a system of advantage. His favor is a system of advantage. It cannot happen to you the way it happens to men. Don't get used to it. I don't expect my life to be ordinary. I expect something spectacular. Every day like a soup opera, there is an episode of signs and wonders. Listen. That people can look at your life and say, let's watch God, what God will do this week. Because there has to be a message. It's impossible for Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and there is no message. No, you are not a sign and a wonder. You have what it takes to do signs and wonders. But God wants you to be the sign yourself. To be like that star that shines in the east. That when men look at you, they say, what manner of God is this? Men whom the earth was not worthy of. See, there is nothing the devil can do about this. No. There is a kind of speed... That God can bring to your life. Regardless of who loves you or who does not love you. It doesn't play any role. God just sits upon you with his jealousy. And decides to make a statement. Let me tell you. Fearful is the man that God decides to use. As a canvas to write a statement. You will look for their downfall wasting your time. They will just continue to rise. Held by the jealousy of God himself. Are we together now? Please sit down. God can choose to love Jacob. God can choose to honor Jabez. God can choose to lift Rahab. God can choose to turn the story of Ruth around. God can choose to cause Abraham to be the father of nations. He is God. Who should he consult with? Where is the parliament that must accredit him? Listen. We live in a proud world where men sit down and make it look like I am the reason for your lifting. If you ignore me, you will die. And while it is true that men are pipes, we have 7.2 billion of them. That's enough variety for God to choose. No single man can get up in arrogance and Pocket your destiny 
No. I'm shaking off fear and unbelief from you. So that when we begin to minister, you don't just stand. Some of you may have written some things in your prayer request and left others because you have convinced yourself that God cannot go that far. My brothers and sisters, what does God need to do in your life again for you to believe that He is mighty? Hallelujah. I told the Lord something. I said, Lord, let my life be a sign and a wonder. A testament of what you can do with a man that loves you. Much more than celebrating a man like you did. It is, it is the celebration of God and the possibilities that he can birth on earth. That my life will not limit God. No way. I like the things men say cannot be done. If it is God that says it cannot be done, I will not even try it. Because it's a waste of time. But if it's man that says it cannot be done, I say, God, what do you say? Huh. When Jesus came, he said, you say this in your law, but this is what I say. You say this in your law, but this is what I say. Like he's speaking to someone. They said this in your family, but this is what I say. He can veto anything. And turn a man's life around. Hallelujah. Someone gave me a very humorous testimony. I think it was yesterday. They had been trying to pursue something that has to do with the dad. And um, uh, you know, I think the dad is, is, is in the force or something. And they had just deprived that man for five years. I think if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, no salary, no benefits because some ammunitions were missing. And they traced to, to him. Imagine a breadwinner of a family for about five years. Things went down. And you know if, if he wins the case, they will have to restore everything plus damages. Are we together? And they kept manipulating, manipulating. And I think just yesterday I was told that, was it yesterday or I think this week, the verdict came out and came out in the father's favor. I said, you should start dancing in your household. Because whether the devil likes it or not, Everything that was lost shall be returned unto you. Everything that was stolen shall be restored unto you. Everything that was lost shall be returned unto you. Everything that was stolen shall be restored unto you. Things never get missing. They only leave you. They are still on earth. Everything that leaves a man does not go out of the earth realm. It is only within a distance that is beyond your reach. There is a force from heaven that sustains an ability to call the things that be not and draw them. There is a force of attraction. I prophesied as I was commanded. It says, and the bones, they were all there. Just because you cannot see them does not mean they are not there. Everything you are looking for is looking for you too. And there is a force that can connect you to them. Please listen, I'm not just motivating you. The things that we have heard, the things we have seen, the things that our hands have handled. That who is he that saith a thing and it comes to pass? That God did not vet it and approve it. Let God be true. And let every man, including your situation, be a liar. Listen to me. Please hear me. A miracle service is not just the time to pray for the sick. Not everybody is sick. You see the level of high blood pressure disturbing young people now. You see people talking like fools on the road. Someone in early 20s talking to himself moving around this our road from here to abuja almost every day someone is dying nobody leaves his house to die worry pastors collapse on stage i've told you that there is a technology that sends israel to egypt it's called hunger every time there is hunger 
Israel must go to Egypt to find bread. Genesis 42. Please give it to us. Let's just read it. I apologize. The projection is not very clear. But just see that scripture. Now, everyone read. If you can see it. We're reading 1 and 2. Ready? Read. Now, when Jacob saw that there was what? Corn. Where? In Egypt. Jacob said unto his sons, Why do ye look upon one another? Verse 2. And he said, Behold, I have heard that there is corn in Egypt. Get you down thither and buy for us from thence that we may live and not die. This is a prophet. But lack of corn was making him mortgage his children. Go to Egypt. I'm a prophet, but we're about to die. And I hear that wherever there is corn, that's where people go to. Look, let's not lie to ourselves. Wherever there is corn, that is where people go to. Including a prophet. He had, because the Bible says the increase of the earth is for all. And that even the king is fed from it. When there is corn in Egypt, believers will have to go down there. We need time to serve the Lord. We need time to bear the revival that he wants to bring. We need time to pursue the purposes of the kingdom. But that time cannot be given to you when you spend your life looking for corn in Egypt. It's a cost to go down to Egypt. But if that is the only place that has corn, then you will have to go down to eat. And then there arose another Pharaoh that knew not Joseph. And the people of God got into servitude and slavery. Don't mind the ignorant people who say it doesn't matter. You just serve God like that. According as his divine power hath given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. Everyone say after me, life, godliness. Life, godliness. There are things that pertain unto godliness. Your character, your work with God, your prayer life, your spiritual development. Those are things that pertain unto godliness. But there are things that pertain unto life. Your children's school fees, your accommodation, the well-being. That any man who is unable to cater for his family, according to scripture, has denied the faith. And is worse than an infidel. So when the devil wants to discourage you as a man of God. You're preparing a sermon and here comes your son with a PTA letter. And your eyes, the letter is usually typed. Except where the money will be. They write it with biro. And the price is doubled. You stand there wanting to kill your son. Why has the school fees been doubled? And the said, they just gave me to give you. And you look at it. Your salary is not increased. Nothing else is increased. But the bills are rising. The devil wants to send you to Egypt. A time will come what, what you would not do yesterday, you will now do tomorrow on the strength of the pay. Hunger can take men to Egypt. Hallelujah. A dear man of God called me, I think two weeks or so. I don't know him so much. And from one of these nations. And he called me and was lamenting. He said, Apostle, pray for me. Our ministry is under serious financial attack. He said, right now, honestly, the way things are, we may not even be able to hold our service because the bills, you know, things are going down economically and the givings of the people also seem to have followed. And, you know, I got angry in my spirit. I said, this is the kind of news Satan wants. Because, you see, very soon, the devil will bring one rich man who will pocket that ministry because of one million or one five or ten million or whatever it is that he gives you will lose your voice lose your relevance lose your integrity on the platter of hunger was it not hunger that made Esau to sell his birthright only an irresponsible ministry will not address the issue of hunger that is going on there are many things to address, but hunger should be one of them. Believers are hungry. They need a technology that is higher than what has been proposed. Let me tell you, there is a path which no fowl knoweth. The wealth of the lion has not gotten there. There are dimensions reserved for these times when God will bring out as a display of his intelligence. 
Do you not know that the strategy of saving 20% was God's intelligence? It's not just an economic strategy. There is always a reservoir in God's intelligence. For times when people cry, when the saints cry, God will say, show them that the wisdom of God is inexhaustible. Health care is one of the devourers in our world today. Do you know how much it takes to treat people? Once your son is sick, you are crying already because you know. How much does it take? We have so many doctors here. One of our doctors came and I asked him to check a woman. And when he brought the list for the x-ray, I said, I will buy that machine. Oh. I said, I said, I said, I said, and open an x-ray, an x-ray place. I mean, how much? Not the whole body. Oh, I don't know what part of the body it was. But when I saw the bills, I said for x-ray. And almost every day, someone has to go there. If you are collecting 50,000 naira and you use 30,000 for x-ray, there is no reason why that child will give you joy. Are we together? Anything that child does will annoy you. And then help that child. Let him not take first or second or third. You will almost kill the child. There are real issues that we cannot laugh at. Real issues. And this night God is determined to rise up and not only step in, but turn things around. John chapter 10 and verse 10. Thank you. John chapter 10 and verse 10, please. It says, the thief cometh not. There is a name Satan is called. And here he is called the thief. Are we together? If someone knocks your gate and you say, who is that? He said, the thief. You don't need to ask him what tribe, what gender. He will call the police immediately and say, there is a thief. There is an armed robber in front of my house. And Jesus is preaching here. And he says, the thief cometh not. That means you will never see him around. But for to steal and to kill and to destroy. So everywhere you see stealing, killing and destruction. Is a signature, the thief, Satan. He comes into a joyful family. Are we together? Happy husband, come my dear. Happy wife. When the thief comes in between them, he must scatter everything. One flimsy excuse or the other. He will come in between business partners and shred them. When Satan passes a place, you know this is him. He will leave his signature, stealing Killing destruction we would be in trouble if Jesus stopped there, but he says, I am come. Hmm. He didn't say, I have come, I am has come to bring life, and that you have that life more abundantly, lavishly. I am come that you may have life. I have come that he may have solutions. I have come to show you that there is a way out of this. I am come to show you that there are possibilities. Are we together now? Now the last thing I want to say before we begin to pray. I will continue to teach this because repetition is the key to persuasion. The Bible says, according as his divine power. Please give it to us. That's second, first, um, second Peter chapter 1 from verse 2 please. Grace and peace, verse 2, be multiplied unto you uh, through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Verse 3. It says, according as his divine power hath given us. So what gives us in this kingdom? His divine power. Never forget this. It is not faith. Faith is a channel that allows his divine power to pass. The agency, the force that is responsible for connecting us with spiritual possibilities is his divine power for many years there has been an argument about the workings of faith and the anointing there is no argument there are we together faith is the pipe that the power of god flows to to carry supernatural solutions to you if there is no faith there is no channel of the power from the throne room to your situation it will not be possible you don't choose faith or the power of God. That's not a theology taught in the Bible. He never taught any of them in isolation. His divine power. 
every request on your list will be solved by his divine power now let me teach you this i've taught you again what is on you is what controls the results around you please never forget this the results around you do not fabricate themselves the results around you are mirrors they are a reflection of the kind the level the dimension of the grace that is upon you so i can know the grace on you by looking at the possibilities in your life i can know what grace has come upon you by looking at what changes it is impossible to increase in grace and your possibilities remain the same no the testimonies that recycle around your life are an attest they are they attest to the fact that this is the level and the extent of grace hear me every door can open it just depends on the grace asking it to open everybody is a giver it depends on the grace that asks them to give someone can refuse to bless you and yet carry a millionaire and meet someone else and say give me the privilege of blessing you nobody is really stingy the problem is that these possibilities don't happen in the earth dimension they are realities that are finished in the realm of the heavens and only executed the earth is a realm of execution the same way your body is the anointing and the grace on your life is what controls the possibilities around you please listen to me his divine power there are doors that have refused to open the doors are not stubborn the doors are only obedient to the last instruction and since the anointing speaking to it is not that high the door will remain obedient to the last instruction the day a higher authority speaks that door will open i assure you please don't generalize challenges challenges are only relative to the grace that confronts them this is a message of hope for you to hear challenges are only relative to the grace that confronts them even the king could not solve the hunger problem of samaria here comes the prophet he did not come to solve the problem he said ah, okay i see that there is a situation everyone was hungry except the king and the prophet he said by this time tomorrow then a foolish man said even if god will open the window of heaven how will these things be and he says you will see it but you will not partake of it i believe in the power of god i've seen what the power of god can do stop wasting your time trying to change things physically creation has never been disobedient creation is the most obedient entity you can find the money you are looking for is not disobedient there is an unction that calls it if it's not there it is authorized to leave you creation is obedient when noah was ready to open the ark when he opened the ark there was a grace that came on every animal by themselves the bible never said noah went to the wilderness to chase them animals with no higher intelligence they found their way to the ark if animals can find their way to the ark why should your destiny helper find it difficult to find you why should breakthrough find it difficult to noah just stood there and allowed the grace to walk you rest only when the grace walks let me tell you life is hard when you are working on your own in this kingdom we don't work with our hands our hands only help us to receive the grace when it comes you enter your sabbath are you getting what i'm saying now the power of god is the spiritual mechanism responsible the signs and wonders that will happen in this place right now the healings and the miracles and the breakthroughs they will happen according as his divine power acts chapter 10 and verse 38 it says how god anointed jesus of nazareth the information is not that he was anointed look at the extent to which he was anointed with the holy ghost and with power he says he went about doing good and healing all they that were oppressed of the devil for god was with him there are people inside there are people outside there are people standing 
in such sacrifice, waiting for God, it will be very wicked to share the grace, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and tell everybody bye-bye. Return back with your challenge. No. I want you to believe God tonight and insist. Lord, whatever will come upon me must come upon me. Whatever must change must change. Whatever must grow must grow. Whatever must die must die. When there is no expectation, it becomes wrong for God to visit you. Because one of the things that he gave men, seven benefits given to man at creation, one of it is the right to choose. The will that God gave man is a fundamental right. It's not for Christians. Once you are a man, you were given the right to choose. Salvation, even at the detriment of your going to hell, was left for your choice. God will never, never, never violate your right to choose. I said before you life and death. I said before you blessing and cursing. I can only advise you, choose life. I said before you prosperity and poverty. I said before you success and failure. I said before you spiritual growth and, and a low level of spirituality. It's up to you to choose. I choose life oh, and everything that comes with it. I choose speed. I choose increase. I choose honor. I choose dignity. I choose open doors. I choose open heavens. It's a choice. And if you are a family man here, as for you and your house. You can't choose for the whole world, but you can choose for your house. That the favor of God can rest upon your life tonight. And that within the next one month, things will shift in your life in a way and a manner that will surprise you. If you do not believe these things exist, you are not a Christian. A Christian is not just one who is born again. A Christian is one who has submitted to the ideologies of the kingdom as the ultimate value system of your life. Hallelujah. I'd like you to believe God. Don't say I've come for miracle service before. You see, let me tell you the truth. My assignment as a man of God is not to invite you. My assignment as a man of God is to continue to grow in grace. So that the things that would not answer to me in January must answer in June. Otherwise, what is the superiority of growth? If the same thing that did not answer to me three months ago refuses to answer now, I'm only maintaining my spiritual level. I'm not growing. There was a time when some spirits did not answer to the apostles. They went to Jesus asking a question and they said why couldn't we do this he said this kind there is a technology for taking this one out see let me tell you sincerely there is enough grace to wipe the tears in your eyes there is enough grace to turn the tables around the anointing works like money i've taught you it can only solve the problems that are lower than it the anointing does not generically solve every problem no no, you have to understand this. It's very important to know. I have, let me just still five, ten minutes to explain this. Look at this. This is 1,000 Naira. Look at this. And if I give you this 1,000 Naira, it can buy a bottle of water. Is that true? It can even buy you lunch or dinner, depending on where you eat. But this cannot buy you a car. This cannot pay a child's school fees, but it is still money. So if you want to pay a child's school fees, you need more of the same thing to the level that meets the demand. Every challenge in life has a level of grace attached to it. Not every grace solves every problem. If every grace solves every problem, then it doesn't make sense to grow in grace. Acts chapter 2, they were filled with the Holy Ghost. Acts chapter 4, they were filled with the Holy Ghost again. To what end? It says that you stretch forth your hands and that miracles, signs and wonders be wrought in the name of your Holy Son. There was a dimension of grace requiring a higher level of the anointing. Gehazi carried his rod, the rod of Elisha, and he came and laid it on the dead body. The body did not rise. But when the prophet came, 
that dead body came back to life. Every challenge is relative to the grace that confronts it. I know men of God have prayed for you. They are not fake just because you did not get results. It is a reflection of the extent and the level of grace. And God grants the privilege of grace. And that's why as men of God we must continue to grow in grace. So that what we could not solve yesterday, we can now solve tomorrow. That is the proof of growth. Are we together now? We are going to pray tonight. It's going to be a very quick walk in this place. I trust God and I believe that in the name of the Lord, that things will so change in your life, it will surprise you. Please rise up on your feet. Lift your voice and begin to mention specifics. Unto him that answers prayer shall all flesh come. Rise up on your feet and please pray. Oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah Yahweh yeah oh yeah yeah say oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah oh yeah 